What's up you guys? This is Rob from the Gay Guy Plays and dear lord sweet baby Jesus, the hype train has gone underground when we take a look at Necro's Prime Access. Now honestly, this is absolutely insane as I literally just did one of these last week with the release of Titania and the Silver Grove. However, this time silver is out and gold is the new metal of the moment as a slew of new primes has hit the scene. Tigris Prime, Galatine Prime, and the man of the hour himself, Necro's Prime, decked out in both a new armor set and Cyan Donna. As a Always, I'll leave you guys links to the drop locations in the description box below. So let's start with the easy stuff. The Galatine has gotten a major upgrade, jumping from 125 base damage up to 165, giving it the highest base damage of all equipable melee weapons in game. In addition, it's got a 10% boost to its crit chance, putting it at 20%, which goes quite well with its existing 2x crit multiplier. This is super solid for all of those body count and blood rush combos. And for everyone that's out there screaming and crying about power creep, I went ahead and tested this for you against the Fragor Prime, both using the same crit build. And while the Galatine Prime was doing about 30k to unarmored targets at a 25 times combo counter, the Fragor Prime was putting out 43k. The big difference between the two being their innate attack speeds and movesets, so take a chill pill, okay? Now as for the model, let's be real here, it would have been really hard for them to fuck up this one. The Galatine is a gorgeous model on its own and the Galatine Prime just follows suit. Both the hilt and the butt of the handle have got a bit more heft to it, and the shape is actually quite a bit different from its original, yet still manages to keep the spirit of its non-prime variant. Now on to Tigris Prime. So before I start this conversation, I have to say that I was never a fan of the Tigris series. I've always felt like shotgun users fell into one of two camps. You either like the Vakor Heck or the Sancti Tigris. And personally, I was one of the Heck boys. So let me know if my feels on the situation are completely unfounded. Alrighty, for this one, I'm actually going to put it up against the new Loka version, as that's what I'm assuming people are more curious about. So its damage has jumped from 1,260 to a whopping 1,560. However, it has traded in 5% of its crit for a 5% increase in status, for a total of 10% crit chance and a 30% status chance, which goes without saying that I'm not that fond of whatsoever. Especially since its crit multiplier has gone up to 2 times from a 1.5 times. Seriously though, don't play with my emotions like that, how you gonna give me more crit damage but take away my crit chance? That's fucked up. And last but not least, the Tigris Prime retains 2 stats from the original Tigris, the 9.1 accuracy, which is higher than the Sancti Tigris and it's 1.8 reload speed, which is slower than the Sancti Tigris. A bit of a pain in the ass, but nothing too major. Right now, my personal feels on this weapon are, damn it looks good, but I do kind of miss that corrosive proc and heal. Now, as for the model, fuck every other Prime primary to date, this thing is absolutely gorgeous. It puts the goddamn Burst in Prime and Paris Prime to shame. What the fuck are you two even doing at this party? No one invited you. Go home, and don't come back till you get your shit right. Honestly, there are no words. I mean, both the Tigris and the Sancti Tigris were beautiful, so it's not like we should be surprised, but damn, somebody needs a raise. And on that note, let's get to the dead razor himself, Necros Prime. Holy shit, there is so much to say. First off, let's address the pinky thing. He's got these odd accessories that are dangling off of them. Now, I don't love them, but I kind of also don't hate them. A lot of people were saying in the comments that they had something to do with the voodoo tradition, but I looked it up and I couldn't find anything on them. However, what I did find is that in Thai and Chinese tradition, they do have these extended fingernail claws to signify aristocracy. So that might be the thing? That aside, a lot of his detail comes off almost raveny with feather-like details on the sides of his chest, and of course those two massive wings springing from his back, which really just makes me feel bad for Zephyr because Titania can fly and Necros has wings and Zephyr's got none of that. Now honestly, at first I didn't like them, but then I toss on the Titania idol and BAM it just all comes together. And aside from his dope ass helmet and golden toes, what? The only thing that's really left to mention is the fact that his guts are literally like just out and apparently also adorned with gold. Okay, so I got carried away with the fanboying and I totally forgot to talk about the stats, but he's at a boost to his shielding from 270 at max rank to 450, which is actually pretty chunky. However, I usually don't build him for that, but a buff is a buff is a buff, right? And more importantly, he's also had a boost to his maximum power from 150 at max rank to 188. Just that little bit really helps out high efficiency users, especially those that run Zeneric or Equilibrium. Really, really happy about that, even if it is a weird number. I'm not the only one whose OCD is triggered by that, right? Now, as for polarities, he has received an additional dash, and that's it. I really have nothing else to say beyond that. Now, moving along, as for his prime defects, he's only really got one, and it's a weird one. The texture of his shadow 
Shadows of the Dead is much more solid and rocky or oil slicky. I honestly can't quite place what they were trying to go for with it, but that's what it is. In addition, heavy gunners get this weird extra coloration. I'm not sure if that's intended. I don't know what's going on, so let's get to the accessories. So starting with the Acanthus Prime armor set, holy shit, that is a lot of spikes. Now for me, I think it's a bit too much on Necro's Prime, who's already got a lot going on as it is, but I know that there are a ton of people in the fashion frame community that believe that more is more, and if that's your prerogative, you go on with your bad self. Now, if you toss this on a frame that's got a little less going on, it actually looks pretty cool. It's got this demonic angel kind of look to it. It's not my personal favorite, but honestly, the edgelords really haven't gotten too many accessories as it is, so this one goes out to y'all. And for those of you wondering, Acanthus is a plant associated with eternal life and is traditionally displayed at funerary celebrations. The thorny leaves represent pain, sin, and punishment, which like totally fits the Necro's theme, right? Now, the accessory that really surprised me the most was the Uru Prime Cyan Don. It honestly takes a lot for me to like a Cyan Donna. The placement, the length, the physics, and frankly, I was no fan of the original Uru Cyan Donna to begin with. But holy shit, that prime! It looks so fucking good! Now you guys know I've always preferred it when DE does chain link on their dangly bits as opposed to their traditional stuff. And even though you can tell that it still has a little bit of the floppy physics, they do manage to hide it pretty well. The energy effects are on point from the flow on the Cyan Donna itself to the graphic detailing at the bottom. This one is just very well done, even if it does kind of make Necros look like a silverfish. So that pretty much does it for Necros Prime access, let me know what you guys think. Is the Acanthus armor set too much? Is the Tigris Prime the most beautiful fucking Prime primary out there? And how do you feel about Necros' pinky detail? Honestly, the more I look at it, the more I like it. Regardless, as you can see, I've got even more work on my plate now, so I'm gonna have to love you and leave you. But I will see you guys again very soon with full reviews on the Prime weapon. So take care of yourself till then, Bye bye